I'm Dr. Mark Ko. I'm a pediatric dermatologist as well as a dermatologist. I also do dermatopathology. I am also the head of uh, the dermatology department at KK Women's and Children's Hospital. And currently, I'm the president of Rare Skin Condition Society Singapore. Basler psoriasis is a type of psoriasis which is uncommon. Instead of scales, they get small little pus bumps which can be scattered all over the skin. It can be associated with also a very red rash. Patients may have high fever. They can be quite ill. They may have joint pains as well and they can be quite sick and end up in hospital. So I would say it's a mixture of both. We have found genes that are associated with pustular psoriasis. It's of course not just purely due to genes, but it's multifactorial as well. So what happens is that a trigger comes along and then triggers the immune system to react against the skin and patients then develop this pustules and this rash and the associated symptoms like fever. Infections, so some patients may you know, get worsening with underlying viral infections or even bacterial infections. It can also flare with stress, whether it's physical stress, emotional stress. Even physical changes in environment can trigger psoriasis as well. A lot of children with muscular psoriasis tend to be a little bit more severe, so we need to go on to more systemic medications or oral medications. So a common medication that we give our patients with pastor psoriasis is escitretin, and this medication helps to improve the psoriasis quite a few of our patients. However, they do need to take it on a long-term basis, and some of these patients may be on these medications for quite a few years. Two other medications that we give orally for pastor psoriasis are cyclosporin as well as methotrexate. All these medications are associated with side effects such as um, liver or kidney inflammation. Nowadays, we do have newer medications called biologics, and these are usually injected medications. These medications are also quite costly, so sometimes we do need to find some funding for our patients for these biologics. So patients with pustular psoriasis, they can get quite severe systemic symptoms, such as high fever, joint pains, feeling very unwell, poor appetite, vomiting, so during that initial period when the pustular psoriasis is flaring, they can end up in hospital for quite a few days or even weeks until we manage to control the psoriasis. And because of the break in the skin, pustular psoriasis can be painful, especially at sites that are in contact with the surfaces, such as the hands and feet. We need to consider the complications of medications as well, because a lot of them are on systemic medications for a very long periods. So they need to come in for regular blood tests, which for children can be uh, rather traumatic. Sometimes it can be quite itchy and because of the itch, they may not sleep well. And that leads to poor quality of life. And it's a whole cycle that you know goes downhill if we don't control the pustular psoriasis as well. So whenever we tell patients that it's a chronic disease, it takes time for them to understand you know, that they need long-term medication anytime it can flare up again. So it takes a while for them to usually get used to what we tell them. And however, you know, we really guide them through the months and years that we're with them. With proper treatment, I think a lot of them, after a while, get, they understand the disease and they understand the treatment. And, and a lot of them grow up to be normal children. I face more joy rather than problems when I do pediatric dermatology. I love kids. I love to interact with kids. Uh, it makes me feel, feel young as well. Yeah, but it's quite sad sometimes when you see a very sick child that is not doing very well. And it's not common in dermatology that you see a very sick man truly pass away. But uh, we do get the occasional patient that has a very severe skin condition. It can be quite painful for both, of course, the patient, but the family as well, and even for healthcare providers, because sometimes we know the patients very well, and then, you know, they, they deteriorate. After, you know, going with them for years, 
and you see them grow up, you treat them almost like your own children. And then when they uh, deteriorate, you know, you can feel the pain. On the other hand, sometimes we get patients who, you know, sometimes you want to treat, but they are not open to our treatment. And that sometimes can be quite frustrating for us because we know how to treat these patients. We know the diagnosis. And yet parents or, or, or the caregivers don't comply with the medications. If you want to hear the long story, it'll probably take you 20 minutes. But maybe I'll summarize it in five. So I knew I wanted to do pediatrics when I was a medical student, a fourth year medical student, when I first did my posting in pediatrics. And I realized, you know, I, I, I just have something with children. You know, I know how to interact with them and I can interact with them. So I went into pediatrics first. But somehow along the way, I lost my way a little bit and it took me a while to finally find my way back. And I finally finished uh, the initial training in pediatrics. But during that time, you know, I sort of got interested in dermatology. Dermatology is not very well taught in medical school, so you know, I, I didn't really like it then. But when I was doing pediatrics and after my pediatric training, I sort of you know, got really interested in dermatology and I realized that it, it's a very interesting field. And it's a field that traverses both medical treatments as well as surgical treatments. So we sometimes do surgery as well, the skin. And I really like the metal pathology. So that's, you see the microscope behind me. Yeah. So after we take skin biopsies, you know, I read the skin biopsies under the microscope. So I, I trained in that in dermatology. And then from there, of course, with my pediatric background and my love for kids, I decided that it was appropriate and after I finished my dermatology training, I would come back to pediatric dermatology. So there are certain subspecialties in pediatric dermatology I, I'm really, really very interested in. And that's mostly conditions that have genetic associations, so genetic skin conditions. And that presents very often in children. Um, I also like to do vascular conditions, which also have a genetic um, background to many of them. Other subspecialties that I'm really interested in uh, cutaneous lymphomas, as well as very rare condition called histiosphactosis, which also has to deal with the immune system. So, well, it's a long journey from the time I became a doctor with pediatrics and I went into uh, dermatology and finally doing pediatric dermatology. So in the last 10 years that I've been pedi a pediatric dermatology, I've had a very fulfilling clinical career. And, you know, I, I think I... I it's, it's a field that I think I, I finally fell into. Um, and some of these things you really cannot force or choose. And sometimes it, it just pays, the, the, the path is just there and we just follow it. So it's a, it's a very, very interesting field for me. And I don't think I'll ever give it up until the big happen. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm.